So now to place my vector type with my spot illustration, I go back to assignment five to my finished spot illustration. And I can still make changes to the spot illustration, still improve it, but it's the important thing is that it's at high resolution. And the important thing is that right here, wish I could zoom in on this, that my line art is still an EPS vector. So even though I did stuff with color holds, I still have the black line art as a vector. It's still a smart object. That means no matter how big I make this image in resolution, it will always be clean. And then I have my color holds, which just went on top of my black line art. Okay, so this was, I go to image size, just to remind myself, this was done at eight by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch. That's how we colored our um, spot illustrations in assignment five. I wanna keep that resolution, that print resolution, but I'm going to change the canvas size around it. And I'm going to make it at least 12 by 12 inches. But for mine, maybe I'll even do more than that. Maybe I'll do 16 by 16 inches. I'm gonna do a square poster. You might do something that's 12 by 16 or 16 by 20, which is the largest we can print. I'll go ahead and do 16 by 20 just so you can see, which is the largest we can print in the lab at 350 pixels per inch. I'm gonna keep my spot illustration just floating right in the middle of the layout. All right, so there we have it. Now, I am going to bring my new EPS vector type, my black type layer, drag and drop it into this to start creating my poster or my key art. And I can post it where I want. And I can tilt it and arrange it with my spot illustration. I can also tilt my spot illustration, but for now, let's just do this. Okay. It's all placed. It's a vector just like my type is, or my spot illustration line art is, right? What I'm going to do is select all of it, even these layers I'm not using, select all of them, even the blank white layer behind, and move them all together. But in order to do that, I need to unlock the ones that were locked. So I just click on those padlocks. Not only can I now move them all, but I can also scale them up. And because my vectors will scale up perfectly, if I hit Command T, and then scale all of it. The only things that have to grow in pixels are the non-vector layers. And because that's just coloring and special effects, those will soften, but they'll be contained by the vector outlines we created. So it's all still beautifully clean. That's the advantage of using vector line art. It will always match whatever resolution you give it. All right, so this is my poster. Now I need to play with color and play with background and play with a border. But first, I wanna play with the coloring options for my type. Because what are the three things required for this assignment? We go back to the examples. You want to have black type design, color type design, and then your finished poster. So we finished the black type design. I just did a screen grab of my, my vector EPS black type, and I just posted it to Canvas. So there it is, my final vector black type. Now I need the color. So just like we colored our logo, a way I can start coloring it is to make a duplicate of it, Command-J, and then double click on the layer away from the type because you're not renaming it. You want the layer styles. I'm just gonna focus on the type here. 
even though mine is for a coloring book and it's going to be printed in black. If this was another kind of job, like an album cover, like a poster, I would want to color the type. So I can do a different, different things. I can try just a, a basic color overlay. Let's make it kind of a golden yellow and put that at 100% opacity, right? I could give it a stroke, just like we were playing with in Illustrator. I can give it a white stroke, but maybe put it to the outside instead of on the inside, and I can make that as large as I want. That will help separate it from a background. So now I have a coloring, but it's not the most interesting coloring. But before I go too much further with coloring, your background is not going to be white. Remember when we colored our illustration, we tried three different backgrounds, black, white, and gray. Well, now I'm going to extend that to the full poster size. I'm going to go to the blank white background, and I'm going to extend it with Edit Fill to that entire canvas. Same thing with the middle gray. Go to Edit Fill. Fill it all with 50% gray. That helps me understand what the outline is doing on the type. And then with black. And we want our poster, we want our type to work on all three backgrounds. And that gives you the most versatility. So edit, fill, and using black. All right. So from there, from there we get to see, well, what are some of the, the advantages and disadvantages of this type? I'll usually design it on the gray background. So the white stroke, what I like is that it gives some separation between the spot illustration and the type. I think it's helpful there. I think it's less helpful with all of these negative shapes that get really fussy, right? So let me try adjusting those effects to the vector. Let me go to the stroke and let me try shrinking it a little bit or even expanding it so it's more solid. And I'm realizing maybe the stroke needs to be really thin like that, or maybe not at all. Maybe I just turn that stroke off. But maybe I add an outer glow and I can adjust those factors. So this is just coming up with your color type. You give it a lot of opacity to begin with. And I like that on some areas and I don't like it on others, right? So this is the great thing. Once you've sized it, you can start breaking up your vector and coloring it individually with layer styles. So how do we do that? You use, just like we did in Illustrator, you use your lasso tool. And we're gonna select around Come on, <laughs> that's my tool operates here. I'm gonna use my lasso to select around the nest portion. I'm not sure why it's not showing. I'm gonna trust that it's doing it. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit Command J and it will duplicate it. And when it duplicates it, it will rasterize it and it will carry those effects with it but it is rasterized. So this is why you always do it on a duplicate because you never want to rasterize your, your type. You always want to have a vector copy of it. And I'm extra cautious, I have two copies of it. Now, for this other layer, I'm gonna add a layer and I'm just going to draw a shape because this is not a contained shape. Remember we talked about contained and uncontained shapes when we um, did the digital coloring of our spot illustrations. This cloud shape that I have is not contained. 
So I have to actually draw the shape I want to color. I just have to roughly stay within the lines. And now on a new layer, this is digitally coloring my type. I'm just going to add in a flat color. And that gives me more options. And then if I went over or under a little bit, I have a three pixel feather on it. I can just delete from that layer. I just overlap my vector. My vector will stay clean to whatever the resolution is. But you see here where it's open, I have to make kind of decisions about what that coloring shape is. And maybe I cut it out of this area. So each of you will have your own, your own issues with your coloring your type and what you think looks best. I think I'll also cut it out here. And I like the three pixel feathering for myself, but you might not want any feathering at all. You want your edges to be really, really sharp, right down to the pixel. But I find the three pixel feathering at this resolution a little bit more forgiving. And then what if I don't like the, um, the effects on this part? on these feathers, but I want to keep the yellow, just not the outline. So what I do is I go up to that raster copy, I duplicate just that, and then I just turn off the stroke. And then I select it again on the layer behind, and I delete it. So I'm just separating out these different vector assets, rasterizing them as I color them when needed, and deleting them out. So underneath it all, I have the, the black vector. I put the white behind the black vector. And then I modified the nest with a, an outline and a color overlay, an outline stroke and a color overlay. And then I separated out these leaves and I just filled them with a color overlay. At any time, I can turn the stroke on, and maybe I want the stroke, but maybe now I just want it a lot smaller. You have to have them as separate layers in order to use the layer styles differently. Now, because I did this block, I can use layer styles on that block color, and I can give it a gradient. Maybe I make that really low opacity, that kind of rainbow gradient. I can change the angle of it. It's kind of silly looking, but can be fun. I can play with the scale, soften it up a bit. And then I can go back to my vector type. I can use the magic wand, select, oh, I didn't have contiguous checked. Remember to have contiguous checked. Take the contained shapes inside these letters, then on a new layer, just like flat coloring, I can fill that. I'll just start with white or kind of a grayish white. I can also do that within my design. Remember, even though it's a locked smart object, I can still just hold down shift and select all of these interior outlines and highlights and color them separately from everything else without having to put a stroke around everything. So it's about understanding how to control what you want to control for your own type design. Vectors are good at giving you contained, clean edges to work with. But then just like coloring our line art for our spot illustration, you've got to understand your layers and not accidentally rasterize things you don't want to rasterize. So now I'm going to paint all those in.